Today I have a review of the new Olight S1 Mini Baton here on the left. It's 600 lumens from something that's smaller than a standard 223 shell here, as I can lay out there. The S Mini Copper on the right, I really like as an EDC, as you can see from its patina. I carry it all the time. The new S1 Mini takes many of these features I like and improves it by making it lighter by 10% and brighter by 50 lumens. It's rechargeable too. It makes a great EDC light. Thanks to Olight for sending this to me to take a look at. The new S1 Mini Baton shares many of its design traits with the Copper S Mini that I've showed before. Here's a quick comparison in size to the S1 Mini Baton in Copper, the Claris MI1C I reviewed a few months ago, and now the uh, S1 Mini Baton. Right now the S1 Mini is made of aluminum and it is a smooth and anodized finish as you can see here. The grip on the body is similar to the uh, M2R I reviewed last month. I've been told this grip pattern is designed for easier cleaning than the uh, checkered grip pattern here and I can understand that. Although with given such a small light I wish that it maybe had just a little bit more grip on it. It's not, you're not going to drop it but in my book a little bit of grip, a little more grip is a little better. Height wise, these two lights are just nearly identical with the S1 Mini coming in just a fraction shorter, as you can see there. When I measured this, the uh, S1 Mini in black there, I measured at 54.1 millimeters in height, 21.1 millimeters in diameter at the head, and comparing it next to a standard 223 that I'll lay in here, they are both just slightly shorter. So weight of the S1 Mini with the battery and clip comes in at 1.52 ounces compared to the copper. Now granted this is going to be heavier. It is 2.53 ounces. But the uh, Claris MI1C that I reviewed, it's just a little bit heavier too at 1.55 ounces. So the Olight is the lightest option on the market currently for this style of light. The tail cap now has a magnet in it, which the copper version did not. And it works, and it'll hold the light, but it's not super strong. As you can see there, it kind of wants to slide off. I wish it was just a little bit stronger. I can light, uh, it'll hold vertically, it'll hold horizontally, but just barely. This light is IPX8 water rated and includes a five year warranty. The head of this light has a signature Olight blue bezel, but this time it's flat and has some engraving on it showing the LED temperature, the CRI rating, and the lumen numbers. It's very discreet and I think it's much better to put this information on the head than on the body like uh, some other Olights I've tested. I really like that. New on this model is a double-sided pocket clip and it's captured like on the uh, Copper S Mini that I have so it will not rotate when it's on the light. You can remove it but it takes quite a bit of force and you might scratch the uh, anodizing as well. If I take the manual here and show you, this new clip allows you to carry uh, tip up like this, or it allows you to carry tip down like this. Both times this light is really going to bury deep in the pocket, which is how I like. One thing to note, and I don't know if this is going to show up in pictures or on camera very well, but uh, if I pull this clip apart, you can see there's just a little bit of a uh, place where the anodizing or paint missed, and I wish. Uh, I hope they fix that and that's just a first uh, production type issue. This clip also allows you to clip it onto a hat as well if you want to make an impromptu headlamp. Just makes it really versatile. The UI of this light is typical of other O lights for the most part. From off, you long press on this light to enter moonlight mode as you can see here. And if you press keep holding, the light will cycle up in brightness and cycle over again. When the light is on, you just press short and it shuts off. This light does have memory mode for about 10 minutes. When that 10 minutes runs out, the light will reset to low. Memory will remember high, but not turbo. The shortcut to turbo is double click from on or off. And it does have a nice kind of ramp to get there. And you can triple click to enter strobe. The light also has a lockout feature uh, that will that you can enter when the light is off by holding that switch there, you can, as you can see, for two seconds. When the light enters lockout mode, you've got a red LED that'll show up here if you press the button. And I wish that was a little bit different because 
you, if you're pushing the button, you won't see that red LED underneath your thumb. I wish the uh, main LED would flash like some other models do. To unlock the light, you press and hold the switch for about one second until the moonlight mode comes on again. This light uses a Cree XM L2 LED and is in cool white. Turbo lasts for one minute at 600 lumens in this version and then bumps down to high at 330 lumens for what's 55 minutes, medium for 60 lumens for six hours, and low for 15 lumens for 30 hours. Moonlight mode is rated at as 0.5 lumens for 15 days. The beam pattern is typical of a TIR optic. I prefer the TIR optic, especially in a small light like this. It creates a large hotspot on center and has a nice spill on the edges, as you can see. It's a very similar pattern to the S-Mini, as they both share a TIR optic. And you can see here it's fairly narrow um, on the table, but it does, on the higher modes, it does spread out. Um, just kind of how the camera is showing it. I find this just to be a really useful beam pattern for EDC type tasks. Here's my night shots for the brand new S1 Baton Mini from Olight. And if I hold down the light, I get moonlight. This is about half a lumen, and again, doesn't really show out. But if I bump up, I get low here. And this does nice at uh, close ranges. So you can see we've got a bush to the left, but then I get up, you can just barely start to see out there. If I bump up, this is really where we're starting to get a nice amount of usable light. And you can start to see just the center of that TIR optic on the fence there to the eye. That's a little hard to see, but it's easier to show on the camera. And if I bump up, here is high. Does a very nice job lighting up my backyard here. And if I double click, I get turbo. And this is quite bright, uh, very impressive for light of this size. Let me walk out there and show you what it's like. For its size, turbo really has a pretty good throw for a light this size. And here is strobe. This light is capable of running on a CR123A style battery. However, if doing so, you can't use turbo because the uh, discharge isn't rated high enough. This light ships with a Olight branded USB rechargeable battery. And unlike other Olights that require the magnetic system, this one just uses micro USB. And it does ship with an included USB, micro USB cable, which is nice. And other lights in this category don't always do that. So it's nice, it uh, clips in there and charges. When it's charging, It'll have a red LED on top here that'll show in that right white circle. And when it's completely charged, that will turn green. Here's a runtime graph I created with this uh, included battery. And from turbo to no light was a total of about 77 minutes. And I measured the parasitic drain of this entire flashlight with, the, with this battery at 0 0.40 milliamps, which isn't too bad. Heat isn't a big issue with this light. Turbo mode only lasts for one minute and it's timed, um, and that's just not hot enough to get this light hot that you can't hold it. It's warm, but it's not any trouble. After that one minute, it kicks down an output to about 330 lumens, which regulates the heat nicely. As I mentioned, I carry my S-Mini in copper quite often as an EDC. I like how deep it fits in the pocket, and I like the beam pattern for general city and office use. The S1 Mini Baton takes all those features that I like and includes them, it adds that different pocket clip, it adds a little bit more brightness, and it uses a rechargeable battery, which are all pluses. I haven't had an issue with this clip, uh, letting, it, letting the light come out of my pocket or getting caught on stuff. I will say that it sometimes requires two hands to get it onto a pocket, it seems, so it's pretty stiff. So hopefully that'll loosen up a little bit over time, and I'd rather have a little bit stiff clip over one that's too loose. When I use this in the office, people are pretty amazed at how much light can come out of such a small light. So here is the package it comes in, and it's pretty typical of recent Olights. You have some features and some information on the uh, other side. You've got a runtime table here. Inside, you get a sheet that says, read me first, and it explains how to uh, pull it out of the box and uh, disconnect the light, which is nice, without destroying any of your uh, packaging. You get a manual here that's pretty well described and translated. It had one error I found that said you had to uh, turn the light on turbo 
or warm the light up to make it work on turbo. I guess if you were using it in a very cold environment, that might be true, but where most people are, that I don't think that'll be a problem. It wasn't ever a problem for me. You also get a lanyard that's included. However, this light isn't uh, threaded with the lanyard itself. So to make the lanyard work, you do need to use the pocket clip and there's a hole there at the top. And it comes with a micro USB cable as well for recharging the included battery. So for me, the pros are it's small size and it's well built with a great light output. The new clip design is great for EDC. The micro USB charging via the included cable is really nice and helps save you money in the long run. There's no proprietary batteries. And the TIR optic creates an even beam pattern with a good throw for its size. There are a few cons, and I've read from other reviews that the high CRI model uh, has a strong green tinge in the beam pattern due to the LED, LED being used. It's also less bright. While I generally really like high CRI, I feel like Olight could have uh, picked a better LED. The cool white version doesn't have this problem. I think the name of this light is a little bit confusing. If you look here at the S-mini baton in copper, that makes sense. Olay also has an S1 and an S10, but this new light here is the S1 mini baton. So I feel like it would have been smarter for Olay to uh, use a name that's not so close to other lights they have, as it just make more sense. I wish the tail magnet was a little bit stronger on the S1 mini baton, and I do not recommend disassembling this light other than just changing the battery. I've read on forums that it's incredibly difficult to uh, reassemble. It's really designed to stay in one piece. Overall, I like the S1 Mini. It's a small evolution from the S Mini I've been using as an e often as an EDC. I like the new pocket clip and that it includes now a magnet on the tail. The beam patterns are similar to the old S Mini and I like the form factor of this light. It's nice to see Olight include a more standardized battery for their lights. While I've not personally tested the neutral white high CRI model, I understand it has that unfavorable green uh, tinge. While I love Olight offering a high CRI model, and it's usually my preference, I wish they'd uh, take a look and choose a better LED that wouldn't have flaws for that, as I feel like it could uh, influence the sales and maybe in the future we might not have that. This makes a great EDC in my opinion, and it puts out a lot of light if needed to needed for a short amount of time. I'm also happy to run it in the lower modes for longer periods of time if needed. It really amazes people at how bright this is with such a small light. It's one I definitely recommend and you can check it out on Olight World and on eBay. Links are below in the description. If you like this video, please like and subscribe as it helps me to continue to bring videos like this to you in the future.